What's up everybody? It is great to be back on the channel and today we are going to be breaking down some effects that I used in one of my most recent music video edits just to give it some style, some flair, and really sauce things up, take it to the next level. If you're somebody out there, whether it be an artist, filmmaker, an editor, and you're looking to maybe collaborate with me and get some special effects done on your own music videos, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. I'm always looking for new projects. I hope to hear from you guys. Let's jump into this tutorial. We've got a nice clean timeline that was already cut and sequenced out to us by Ronnie West, the guy who directed and filmed this music video. Shout out to Ronnie West. I really appreciate everybody who sends me their music video clips to work on on this channel. So the first thing I'm gonna do in Premiere is just take a look at what frame rate these clips were shot in. So the way I can do that is by coming under my project tab, switching the view option, and here I can see the frame rate of all the clips that were sent to me that are included in this edit and you can see that they're all filmed in 25 frames per second 25 frames per second is really cinematic we're not going to be able to do much slow motion effects with 25 frames per second unless we use a tool like twixter you are shooting music videos or any type of high action high energy environment i usually recommend shooting your footage in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second because it enables editors to then create really smooth slow motion effects the first effect i'm going to create on this video is a camera camera flash effect. The first thing you want to do is download a camera icon overlay, something that looks like this. You can get these online by searching up camera viewfinder overlays. And we're just going to expand the scale width and the scale height so that it lines up perfect with our aspect ratio of our footage. And I'm just putting this overlay on video layer two above some footage. So if I just play this back, it's just going to look like an overlay. Let's check it out. Now I wanna turn this into like a picture taking effect, a camera flash effect. Let's drag this up to video layer three and we're just going to take a few clips that look really cool to us from this video and start adding them underneath of our overlay. I like this clip right here where they're all standing in the family room. So what I'm gonna do is hold option and just drag this clip up so it duplicates itself and I put it under the overlay. I'm gonna repeat this process for two more really cool looking video clips. Now that I have my video clips selected and chopped up here in my timeline, this is what we get right now. I definitely want this effect to last way shorter. So what I'm going to do is just shorten up the camera viewfinder overlay. We're just going to shorten up these little video clips in here. Take a camera shutter sound effect that I downloaded off of elementsinvato.com. Let's just take a listen to what this camera shutter effect sounds like. That's how we're going to time up our effect. So let's time this effect up with each camera shutter. Shorten the sound effect up, cut all the edges off so it's nice and clean. Just shorten each of these clips up here to time up with the camera shutter impact. Now, if you don't see these little impacts right here, what you can do is just increase the size of your audio layer. So I'm just going to finish up cutting this effect right here. Now we're getting something like this. So here we go. Boom, boom, boom. In order to stylize this effect even more, what I'm gonna do is come to my effects panel, type in monochrome, and I'm gonna select this monochrome punch, and I'm going to throw that onto each of these video clips, take a posterized time effect, and I'm going to throw that onto each one of these clips as well, and I'm gonna change the frame rate to something like six. So we're just gonna copy paste this posterized time on each of these Clips. So we're going to go brightness and contrast under the effects panel. I'm going to click and drag this brightness and contrast onto this first clip. We're just going to make keyframes for brightness and contrast at zero. And then a few frames to the left of that. We'll just turn the brightness up all the way. Take the contrast up to like 70. And now what I'm going to do is just time up these keyframes so that it starts really bright at the beginning of this clip. And then it gets darker as the clip moves on. And we're going to copy paste this brightness and contrast onto our other two clips as well. Now that we have it all rendered out, let's go ahead and check out what it looks like at full speed with the music on. Let's let's get this thing bumping. <laughs> Now, if you want, you can take the posterized time and just bring it down all the way to one for each of these. So it's just like one individual snapshot instead of having each picture kind of move or you can, you know, keep the one in the middle at six or like 12. 
so that each picture kind of is moving a little bit differently at a different speed just to add some variety in there we can see exactly what's happening right so boom there's a little camera flash and then boom another little camera flash as well as a little movement because of our posterized time and then this one another camera flash and then no movement at all right so we get a little movement in there with this frame right here it just kind of helps keep the effect alive And now I'm going to show you guys a few ways that you can use the Roto Brush tool in After Effects to manipulate your footage and get really creative special effects for your next video. So let's dive in. I have a few areas on my timeline marked with markers. And if you want to mark anything on your timeline, you just scroll to that point in your timeline and hit M on your keyboard and it's going to make a marker. I've made markers where I want to show you guys some rotoscope effects in this video. For this first one, we're going to take this clip that's pretty early on in this music video and we're just going to add some basic clone rotoscopes to this clip. So let's just play it and figure out where we want these clones to start coming out of his body. I think maybe in between on those like hi-hats, right, you can see in the spike on the audio waveform, we can see where those hi-hats are hitting, right? So in between those, I think would be a perfect time for us to have the, this clone effect happening. So let's just make a cut right where those hi-hats are. Boom, right there. And now what we're gonna do is duplicate this clip by holding Option, right-clicking on that new clip and hitting Nest. This is gonna lock in our frame rate from Premiere and bring it over into After Effects. So now I'm gonna right-click on this nested sequence and hit Replace with After Effects Composition. Here in After Effects, I can just select this clip and hit Command D to duplicate it. Now on this top clip, we're gonna call this one Rotoscope because this is the layer we're going to apply this clone effect to. So what we're gonna do is come up here to the top, hit Roto Brush tool, and we're gonna start tracing out his body. Now I'm gonna make my Roto Brush bigger by holding Command on my keyboard, and then we're just gonna Rotoscope his body out just like that, and any area around the edges that gets attached to this, you can see the purple line, we're just gonna hold Alt Option and just click and drag around his body until a computer that we don't want this to be part of our clone. So now it's getting really close up on his body. Just do a little bit of tweaking here. Hit command and drag down to make my brush a little smaller and just get really close to the outline. I am gonna change the quality to best. I'm gonna increase the feather, increase the contrast, decrease the shift edge and increase the reduced chatter. I'm going to hit freeze. What I'm gonna do now with our rotoscope layer, I'm just gonna duplicate it by hitting command D. And now on this rotoscope two layer i'm just going to hit p on my keyboard to pull up the position keyframe we're going to make a keyframe there at the beginning i'm going to scroll about 14 frames in and i'm going to click and drag while holding shift this layer all the way to the left so we have this clone now that is starting underneath our subject and it's going to start moving to the left out of the frame right click on this first keyframe come down here to easy ease out and then i'm going to duplicate this layer on this new layer what i'm going to do is hit u to pull up those exact keyframes we made on our original layer and i'm going to move these new keyframes in about five frames and i'm going to continue to do this throughout this clip where i'm just duplicating the rotoscope layer and moving these new layer keyframes over to the right by five frames highlight the motion blur for all those layers. I usually prefer to just render everything out of After Effects back into Premiere. So I'm gonna come up here to Composition, Add to Render Queue, save this to the music video folder and hit Render. Back in Premiere Pro, you just wanna to navigate to wherever you save that file. You export it out of After Effects. For me, I'm gonna find it on my desktop. So I'm just gonna click and drag this MOV file on top of my After Effects file. So that way we have the dynamic link layer still underneath where we can hop back into After Effects and change something quickly if we need to but we have the .mov file here in Premiere Pro which means we're going to be able to watch this back at faster speed. <laughs> For this next rotoscope effect, we're actually going to be zooming through an object in our frame, kind of creating this infinite zoom through. So I have this position marked on my timeline. We have the artist, he's holding a 
picture frame. So what we're going to do is create a zoom through effect on this picture frame. So I'm just going to make a cut where I want this zoom through transition to start. So we're just going to make a cut right here as this frame kind of starts to come into view here. And we're just going to scroll through and just figure out, you know, how long this shot kind of lasts for where we can see this picture frame. So maybe right about there as his fingers start coming back over the frame, we can end our transition. So I'm going to drag that in. Now this is the shot we're going to be transitioning to right here. And I'm just going to extend this out underneath of this area where we're going to be zooming through that's this top layer and hit okay we're going to bring this back into after effects duplicate our layer just so that we maintain our reference layer i'm just going to call this reference now on this top layer we're going to start our rotoscope let's take the roto brush tool here at the top double click on our layer i'm going to start rotoscoping out the frame of this picture go along the edges so from here i'm going to change my settings to best increase the feather increase the contrast decrease the shift edge and increase the reduced chatter now what i can do to make sure this is a really good rotoscope is just hit the number two on my keyboard after i make a rotoscope and it's going to go to the next frame now that the freeze process has completed for my roto brush i'm gonna hop back here into composition i've hidden my reference layer so all we see is the rotoscope layer what we're going to call this is picture frame duplicate this layer i'm going to highlight this bottom layer we're going to double click now this is going to pull our rotoscope back up unfreeze this layer you select invert foreground and background it's going to keep all of the stuff around our rotoscope and not what we rotoscope freeze this layer now that our new rotoscope layer has finished tracing and freezing we're going to hop back here into composition we have our picture frame layer which i can turn on and off there and then we have everything else around our picture frame layer so for the moment i'm actually going to hide our picture frame drop down the transform properties and we're going to make a keyframe for position scale and maybe some rotation as well we'll see 10 15 frames farther down the timeline and we're going to just zoom in to this picture frame change the position can click and drag if we want to and then we can just continue to scale in until we have a fully transparent background now i like to scale a little extra also tweak the rotation just slightly maybe bring it up plus 13 just so there's a little rotation as we're zooming through duplicate this layer and on this layer that is underneath this new duplicated layer i'm going to take these keyframes and move them farther back and we're going to continue this process to continue to duplicate these layers on the bottom ones move the keyframes about four frames in so you can see here if i hit u on all these layers see all the keyframes how they're stacking each one of these is going to be zooming through into this picture frame now you might have to do some adjusting because this is a rotoscope and not a freeze frame zoom through so you might have to tweak out some of these layers so that you're not seeing the picture frame as they zoom through and actually what you can do is cut each of these layers once you're zoomed all the way through so hit command shift d once you know you're through each layer once you have all your layers trimmed down and your keyframes set we're just going to turn them all back on take these zoom through layers i'm going to hit u we're going to easy out on all of these first frames come down to keyframe assistant by right clicking and go to easy ease out turn motion blur on for all your layers as i scroll here to the middle of the timeline you can start to see the 3d tunnel that we are achieving through this effect i can hit u to see when the zoom in is going to start on our first zoom in layer and what i'm going to do is turn our picture frame layer back on so we see our picture frame drop this below our first zoom through layer and i'm going to take this picture i'm going to keyframe the position and then here about six frames in just going to drag this layer so that it just kind of falls away out of the frame easy ease out this first keyframe and then i'm going to cut it once it's gone and out of the way this picture isn't just going to randomly disappear it's actually going to just kind of fall out of the screen as you can see as i kind of just scroll through there you can see how that picture just starts to kind of fall out of the frame. I'm going to come up here to composition, add to render queue, change it from lossless to lossless with alpha, render this out. Now, when I say lossless with alpha, that just means we're going to render with that transparency, which means whatever's underneath this layer, this effect will be shown where the transparency is shown here in After Effects. I'm going to go to my desktop where I rendered this file to, and I'm going to click and drag it above our nested 
sequence that we dynamic linked out to After Effects. Now what I'm gonna do with this dynamic link layer is just drag it up to the very top layer and I'm gonna hide that layer so that we're not seeing or reading that dynamic link layer. I didn't have love in the city, I hit another state. Life lessons niggas be Jeremy, they Harvey to face. A lot of niggas slithered in the, uh, I mean they take the snake. It's just kind of waving the handgun around. I'm gonna duplicate that first layer and I'm gonna rotoscope out the Glock pistol in this clip. Hop back here into the composition. I'm gonna hide the background layer and I'm gonna render this out as a transparent layer. So we're gonna go to lossless with alpha and then I'm gonna bring it back in to After Effects where we can apply an outline effect. Hide our Glock layer that we traced out. I'm gonna drag in our MOV layer and on this layer, we're going to auto trace and apply a saber effect. So I'm gonna hide the background layer for now. We're gonna take our MOV layer. We're gonna come up here to layer auto trace we're going to change it to work area just going to keep all these uh, roughly the same and hit okay i'm going to come up to my effects and presets i'm going to type in saber now saber is a free plugin highly recommend checking it out and we're just going to click and drag it onto our auto trace layer and change the customized core to layer mask and then we're going to change the render settings to transparent so now we have this outline happening behind our gun layer turn on our background layer it's going to come up to my saber effect we can change it to fuel so that's a little bit less intense keyframe the intensity so let's bring the intensity up so that looks pretty cool right there i'm now i'm gonna just make keyframes for glow intensity glow spread and glow bias i can also make a keyframe for core size i'm gonna hit u on this layer and i can see all my keyframes for this saber effect i'm gonna drag them all the way to the end now here at the beginning with this auto trace layer we're gonna change these values down to zeros so that way there's no saber effect happening here at the beginning so that it kind of gradually comes in to view. Getting out in a different mode. How the fuck you to plug? You ain't never seen a ball. I got your bitch on my phone. Now she taking off her clothes. In an all white suburban, she handled like a bow. This little bitch wanna fuck just because of guns I told. And you can't tell that it's on. So I've already cut where I wanted to do this rotoscope effect. So I'm gonna hold Option and drag this clip up to duplicate it, nest it, and bring it back into After Effects. Back in After Effects, I'm just gonna click on my layer and I'm gonna select my Roto Brush tool, double click, rotoscope out my subject. Now that our rotoscope is frozen i'm just gonna hop back into the composition panel where we can see how our rotoscope looks by itself but what i'm gonna do with this layer is duplicate it so i'm gonna hit command d on this layer and now i'm going to hide the first original layer so what i'm gonna do on this bottom layer double click back into this rotoscope i'm going to unfreeze this and then i'm going to select invert foreground and background if i want to double check and see what this is going to look like with transparency i can just change the view mode right here for my roto brush you can see right there what that result is going to be for this layer now i'm just going to freeze this rotoscope now that our new layer is frozen we can hop back into our composition panel so make sure you have your transparency turned on so we can see all these little boxes and we're going to go to content aware fill under the content aware fill option we're going to turn the alpha expansion up to a value around 12 and we're going to change the fill method from object to surface check the lighting correction box and now you can play around with these options but i'm going to keep it on strong for this and then we're just going to make it so that the range is the work area and then we'll select generate fill layer it's going to analyze the background and generate a new background for us turn on my original clone layer let me just drag that layer to the top and now what i'm going to do is drop our clone layer down into positions hit p on my keyboard to pull up my position keyframes i'm going to drag this original keyframe farther down my timeline here at the beginning i'm going to have him kind of slide in from the top i'm going to right click on my second keyframe keyframe assistant easy ease in so it slides in really smoothly i think i'm just going to move these keyframes down a little bit farther so it doesn't slide in until a little bit later turn on motion blur and now right at this keyframe right here i'm going to add some shake when he finally connects with his original position right click on all my layers hit pre-compose i'm going to hit ok and then at this spot i'm going to hit command shift d and on this new layer i'm going to go up to window extensions and i'm going to use this plugin called shake sauce 
Now you guys have been watching the channel, you know that I use this plugin quite a bit and I'm gonna include a link to this plugin down below if you're interested. And what this plugin does is it just adds shake and impact to your footage. I like this vertical hit mega with flash, so let's just double click on that. And that's gonna impact our footage so that when our rotoscope finally connects with the bottom in that original position, it's going to kind of shake the screen around. You can see right there, it's kind of just kind of shaking it around, get a little flash effect with it too. Back in Premiere Pro, you can see I've already clicked and dragged our new file onto our timeline. And as I scroll over it, you can see the effect that we're getting, right? So boom, he's sliding in. And yeah, just a really cool way to use the rotoscope and the generate fill. For this first mixed media effect, I'm going to be using the whiteout effects pack by Cinepax. And within the pack, there is these paper textures. So I'm just going to take these paper textures and click and drag them into my timeline. So you can see that they're all very short. The reason why they're all very short on import into my timeline is because if I go up to Premiere Pro, go to settings and I go down to timeline, I can see that my still image default duration is set to two frames. This really saves me a lot of time because I don't have to manually adjust the length of each one of these files for it to be really quick because we only want each of these files to show really, really quickly to give it that stop motion mixed media look. So what I'm gonna do from here is just change the rotation on these to 90. I'm gonna copy and paste that onto all these paper layers. And what we're going to do is just duplicate them for the duration of this effect. So I do want this effect to start where the beat drop is as the music starts coming back in. So I'm just gonna cut right where that is, highlight all these paper layers. I'm going to right click them and select nest. This groups them together into one layer. I'm gonna change the blend mode from normal down to color dodge. You can also try linear dodge screen there is a lot of different blending modes to try and then what i'm going to do with this clip underneath is change it to a monochrome look so i'm just going to type in monochrome under the effects click and drag it onto my video file and that's going to give it this black and white look highlight both these layers right click select nest to make them both into one layer and then i'm going to right click it again and hit replace with the after effects composition and we're going to add a little shake to this clip uh let's do like a big hit hard hit with flash right there looks good let's just double click on that so as i play it back we're getting this super dope result already and then to blend this even more i'm going to increase the contrast so i'm just going to go to effects and presets type in brightness and contrast and drag that onto my clip and let's just turn the contrast up a little bit just to give it a more cohesive look. I think what I'm gonna do to just kind of finalize this look is add a posterized time effect to our final clip. So I'm just gonna click and drag the posterized time effect and change the frame rate down to something like six. You can also try eight, 12. <laughs> Man, I miss my grandpa. I would have had him on some intro. I'm talking with her nice nigga. We put in plastic on these windows. I'm up in Lawrence breaking beat. Let's do one more mixed media effect using a different mixed media pack. So I think I'm going to do this effect right here during this little beat drop. So let's just watch this back. To lead into that beat drop, let's do a mixed media effect. So I'm actually going to make a cut right there on that beat drop. And this clip that happens right before this beat drop kind of leading up to it is going to be our mixed media effect. So what I'm going to do first this time is just start with the posterized time effect on this clip we're going to change the frame rate down to 12 i'm going to be using this creative flow mixed media texture pack take two or three of these paper textures and drag them into my timeline stack these on top of each other highlight both these layers right click scale to frame size and let's just chop this so that it's the length of where our effect is going to go right so it's just going to go right here on this, the beginning of this clip just change the blend mode of these paper textures until you get something that you like, maybe something like that with a little more contrast and maybe move this over so the line isn't going right down the middle of his face right there. And then we can also maybe increase size of this circle right there, boom, let's go to my effects, type in monochrome punch, and we're gonna apply that to our video clip just to add a little bit more contrast, kind of scale up this clip so that we only really see his face. I'm gonna drag these paper textures up one layer and I'm gonna duplicate our video clip. Now on this new layer, I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen and I'm gonna change the frame rate. I don't know, let's go like 16, throw on an echo effect onto this top layer as well. And we can change the echo operator to screen, change the number of echoes. Let's go to like 
seven. So you can see what that echo effect is doing right here. It's kind of just echoing the outline of the artist. Now I am going to bring the opacity of this layer down. Let's bring it down to like a 55 or a 50 right around there. That looks really dope to me. Highlight all these layers, right click and select nest. I'm going to right click this nested sequence, replace with after effects composition. We're going to select, let's go with a medium shake. Let's do X and Y shake and let's just double click that. I'm debating with my white bitch. You can call me Shannon Sharp. Man, my city shine Michaels and I feel like Bray Hart. Man, the way I hit the road on bullshit, man, I'm shitty. So what I'm going to do here is add some paint scribbles where the guy in the foreground of the shot is kind of blowing smoke out of his mouth. So like right there at the end, when the smoke really starts to come out of his mouth is where I want this paint effect to happen. So what I'm gonna do is cut right before the smoke starts to come out of his mouth. Let's right click on this clip and hit replace with After Effects Composition. Click on this layer and duplicate it. And on this top layer, I'm going to select the brush tool and I'm going to double click on this layer. Now under my paint options, you wanna make sure that your duration is single frame and then you can pick whatever color you want to pick on this very first frame. I'm just going to scribble right here and now I'm going to hit two on my keyboard to move to the next frame. And we're just going to kind of animate another little green spec. We're going to put kind of these green lines as he's kind of blowing it out of his mouth just frame by frame here i'm just going to keep hitting two on my keyboard and animating these little green scribbles on our paint layer it's important that you select paint on transparent this is going to enable us to kind of manipulate these paint strokes even more so what we're going to do is hop back into our composition panel and we can actually rename this top layer paint layer and now on this paint layer let's just add something like deep glow Let's throw deep glow onto this animation so our animation kind of glows a little bit. You can see right there, pretty cool effect. Michael's and I feel like Bray Hart. Man, the way I hit the road on bullshit. Man, I'm Chevy Chase. I didn't have love in the city. I hit another state. Life I like to call this next effect the drip effect. It's great when you have like a, a lone object in the foreground and you just kind of want to make things look a little bit more trippy. So you'll notice in this shot, we have this Sprite bottle here. The bottom of the bottle isn't visible. So I'm just going to go over a few frames until where it really starts to get visible right about there. I'm just going to make a cut right there so I know that's going to be the beginning of this effect. And then go to where it kind of ends, like right around there, and make a cut there as well. So now we have a nice chunk of our original clip. Right click on this little chunk and hit replace with After Effects Composition. In After Effects, what I'm going to do is select our clip, come up to our effects and presets, and type in CC Smear. I'm going to click and drag that onto our clip here, change some values for the from point and the to point. So the from point is just where our drip is going to start. And if I click on my CC smear effect, I can move this from point down here to the very bottom, the middle of our bottle. And now I'm going to move this point as well, which is our to point. And I'm going to move that down here at the bottom as well. Let's so make keyframes for from and to. I'm going to move maybe five frames in and I'm going to adjust these keyframes. So boom, like that. If I can't see my bottom one, I can just zoom out right there. And so I'm just going to go along here and just make keyframes that follow the bottom of this bottle. And then it swings this way. So let's move our points over this way, move our points back the other way. And now if I click on this layer and hit U, I can see all the keyframes we just created. So I want to make the radius quite large here in the beginning and make a keyframe. And then as it kind of moves forward, we're going to decrease the radius a little bit. And then maybe as it goes all the way to the end, you can really bring it down. At this end point, I want the reach to be zero. So it's going to have basically no drip at all. We can kind of maximize the amount of drip that we want. So let's just bring it down. And then here in the beginning, again, we can start it at zero. So it's going to kind of drip as the clip moves forward right there. Now you might want to play around with these points right here. Maybe we Maybe we drip this down, just like straight down the whole time instead of having it kind of swing out. The next step for me in this process is gonna be making a music video title for our intro. First song in our music video is called Y Code Deluxe. So I've already typed out the letters here in After Effects. Create a new solid layer, and I'm going to use a plugin called Element 3D. I'm gonna include a link to Element 3D down in the description if you're interested. It's a really great way to achieve 3D text. So what I'm gonna do now that I've applied Element 3D to our new solid layer, I'm going to open up the custom layers come down to custom text and masks, and I'm gonna change the path layer one 
to our letters. So now that that's done, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into scene setup, select extrude. This is going to turn our letters into 3D, play around with the bevel scale, get creative, drop down my presets button, and I'm going to apply a physical material. I'm going to use this one called Chrome, so I can just double click on it. And now our letters have kind of this chrome texture and i'm actually going to import a texture from my glitch pack which you can download on venturevisuals.com got 40 glitch overlays in the pack and i really like this glitch overlay it's really creative and i want this to kind of show through the letters so what i'm going to do is click and drag this glitch texture into my timeline i'm going to drag it below my solid and now i'm just going to duplicate this until we have it kind of extended out for the duration of this uh, sequence here. Highlight all these glitches, right click and pre-compose them all into one layer. So now what I'm gonna do is come back to my red solid layer, drop down the custom texture maps for my element 3D. Change the layer one to the texture that we want it to have. So this would be pre-comp four because that's the composition our glitches are in. So now that we've changed that setting, we're just gonna hop back up here into scene setup, select this button called environment so now we can change the texture of our letters by just loading in our glitch layer and then we can change the uv repeat the uv offset the input levels the output levels to get a different look so i recommend just kind of playing around with these settings until you have some good looking letters so once i have my glitch texture showing through my letters as you can see here i'm just going to hide my bottom two layers so we can only see the element 3D letters. So now what I'm gonna do is throw on an effect called Deep Glow. We're gonna throw that onto our solid layer. It's just gonna make our text look even cooler. So I'm just gonna decrease the radius, you know, kind of de-intensify de this glow a little bit. I'm gonna come up here to group one, open up the particle replicator, particle look, open up the multi-object. We're gonna enable the multi-object and now we can start displacing the letters of our text animation. So you can see right there how they all kind of start spread. What we can do from here is start animating the letters how we want them to look. So I can change the Y values. We can scatter the multi. So they all kind of start at different angles and rotate everything here in the beginning. And then we'll just reset everything as it all comes in. So let's just start it like that. If you want to select all your keyframes, you just hit U on the layer. You can open up all the keyframes, highlight our secondary keyframes, right click and easy ease them in. Turn on motion blur, turn on my transparency. I'm going to render this back to Premiere Pro. Marco. Marco. City the next thing I'm going to add to this edit is going to be some bass shake impacts. Now you guys have been listening to the song. You've heard how many kick drums and bass hits there are in this song. It's very punchy and we want to do something to emphasize the bass hitting with the beat, create some energy. Zoom in on my timeline. In the waveform, all these little spikes, right? And these spikes are most likely going to be kick drums. So on these kick drum hits, let's start adding some bass shakes within Premiere Pro. I'm talking winter nights, nice, nigga. We put in plastic on these windows. I'm up in Lawrence breaking bitches, nigga. Have so many bimbo. Right there, there's like five bass hits right there. You can actually hear them and see them, right? So let's just make a couple cuts over those bass hits where these effects are gonna go. So I'm just gonna go maybe every three, four frames. And we're just going to make a couple cuts here above the sections we want the bass impact shake effects to start. Now we have a couple sections above these bass hits. Take a transform effect. Just going to kind of wiggle the screen around using the transform effect. The scale and the position keyframes at the default there in the beginning. And then let's go like two frames in. And let's just zoom in quite a bit here. Let's move the position up and then maybe back down towards the end. So you get kind of like a vertical shake up and down. And now what you can do to kind of blend this together is just turn up the shutter angle. That's going to increase the amount of blur we have on this shake as well. Let's combine this transform effect with a brightness and contrast. Let's click and drag a brightness and contrast onto this clip as well. Starting at the beginning, let's keyframe the brightness and the contrast. Let's take them way high up so it's really bright. You get a nice flash, you know, a really nice bright flash there in the beginning. And then as this effect moves forward, we can just reset these values back to zero. So we get a really quick flash there in the beginning. So another really easy way to make a bass shake impact effect within Premiere is to use an effect like fast blur. So I'm just gonna take a fast blur and throw it onto this next 
base hit and I'm going to change the blur dimensions to vertical. In the beginning, let's take our blurriness way up. Let's go to like 400 and let's make a keyframe there in the beginning. As this effect moves forward, maybe three or four frames, we'll reset the value back down to zero. We don't want it to last more than like three or four frames because the kick drum in this song is very, very punchy. Let's copy and paste these effects down my timeline and we can actually change the blurriness. We can make some of these bass hits a little bit more blurry, a little bit less blurry. Just keeps things more fluid that way if you just tweak some of the settings for each bass hit. And it does take more time, but it will keep your visual a little bit more eye appealing. My grandpa, I would have had him on some intro. I'm talking with her nice, nigga. We put in plastic on these windows. I'm up in Lawrence breaking bitches, nigga. Had so many bimbos. would have smacked you with the standard, then cleaned you with the extendos. Man, I'm debating with my wife. Along with the bass hits and impacts, I really love to create my own stutter effects. These stutter effects are a little bit more commonly used on the hi-hats and higher pitch sounding instruments. You can see right here, we have a couple little spikes right here. Now these are the hi-hats in the song and this is where I want to put my first stutter effect right there. So it ends right there and it pretty much starts right here. So let's just delete this section. I'm gonna take the second part of this clip and duplicate it by holding Option and dragging it up. I'm gonna hit Command R and reverse the speed. Now let's also increase the speed to like 900 and let's drag that over to this where our stutter effect is gonna go. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of chopping right here and we can just kind of manipulate these so they're a little bit different, drag them around, but they're all gonna be basically playing like the same part of the clip just slightly off and in reverse, right? So we're just gonna have like a little stutter effect right here. A couple old things trying to say I'm with them, but I didn't pop out. So let's take our classic monochrome punch since that seems to be a recurring style across this music video. Add that to these little stutter effects in here. Take a glitch overlay from my glitch pack, which you can download on venturevisuals.com. So let's just find a good glitch overlay right here. So this one's really cool, kind of all warped out. Let's just drag that into our timeline and let's shorten it up over our stutter effect, which will be right there. So we'll cut the excess off, change the overlay blend mode to screen. The last thing I want to do is just add a little bit of directional blur. So I'm actually going to nest all of these stutter clips together, hop to our effects panel, type in directional blur, throw a directional blur onto these clips, increase the blur length a little bit, just change the direction to 90 so it's horizontal. I'm just going to kind of wiggle the blur length in my timeline between like zero and 90, just like that, just kind of like wiggling around a little bit. Mondo from the biddies for the children, I inspire. A couple old things trying to say I'm with them, but I didn't pop out. Grab an order from Casey Smokeburger, then I hot out. They really influenced by the shit that we be doing. We didn't mow so many rappers, but they ain't giving credit. Man, that's this shot right here. This is just a quick shot, maybe just a second or two in the actual video, but we got the artist kind of coming across the screen right there in the foreground. And what I'm going to do is right click on this clip here in Premiere. We're going to nest it and bring it into After Effects. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer in After Effects, select the top layer, and just start rotoscoping my top subject. Here in my composition panel, what I'm going to do is hide my rotoscope layer. So we're just seeing this background layer. And I'm going to apply the Slit Scan plugin. So let's drag and drop that onto this background layer. First thing we're going to change is the dimension from vertical to horizontal. Take this delay down to something like 0.5 or 0.4. And then we're going to change the mode from follow to copy paste. Now imagine this point option as the width of your entire preview. This effect is going to be starting on the very far right. And we're going to make a point there at the right. Now, as this guy moves through the screen, we're actually going to move our point to the left. So it ends up kind of right in the middle of our subject there. And then that's going to make a keyframe as we move through the screen. Now he continues to move kind of farther to the left. So I'm just gonna continue to move my point to the left of the screen until the very last frame. We can move it a little bit farther. Turn my rotoscope layer back on. One thing I notice is these lines are pretty blocky here. So let's take the delay and let's go down to a point one. Now we don't have any line blockiness. Highlight both these layers, pre-compose them, and we're going to add RSMB, which is just gonna kind of blend the rotoscope a little bit better 
with the plugin. Hot out. They really influenced by the shit that we be doing. We didn't mow so many rappers, but they ain't giving credit. Man, that style that you took from us shit is so pathetic. One of the coolest things about rap videos is there's usually a lot of jewelry, a lot of shiny object, which is why I love this next effect. So let's take this shot for example. We have the artist kind of looking into the camera and you get a really clear view of his necklace. So let's just make this jewelry shine a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this clip right click on it and hit replace with After Effects Composition. Throw an effect on this layer called Sapphire Glint. Now this is a plugin included as part of the Sapphire Suite. Go to Edit Mocha and we're going to trace out where his necklace is. So I'm going to go to my X Pen tool right here and then I'm going to just kind of trace around the area of his necklace. From here, I'm just gonna click on this track forward button now that I've got the necklace traced out. And you can see Mocha does a pretty good job of tracking each frame of this necklace. Now here at the end, it does mess up a little bit. So let's just go to the frame where it starts to mess up. You can see his hand is coming down into the frame. And then the following frame, the whole shape is kind of off. So let's just move this shape around here. Let's bring it back down, kind of move these points to where they should be. So right there is good. I'm just gonna continue this track forward. It's done. So what I'm gonna do from here is just save this up here at the top left and hit exit. And now when I take the threshold down, you, you will see his necklace start to glow. So watch this. I'm just gonna keep taking it down here and boom, you can see this glow happening around his necklace. So one of my favorite ones to use is this one called Realistic Glint 2. So let's just load that in there, take the threshold down until we can start to see it coming through on this jewelry piece, right? So right about there, as I play this back in full speed, you can see the effect that it's having on the jewelry, right? So right there in the beginning, it might be just a little bit too intense. Let's take the brightness down. Let's also move the threshold up just a little bit. Seeing things, bro, blow the wind wood off that bitch like the skating ring. High as hell, looking in the mirror, damn, I can't see a thing. I'm gonna say rare money every time like a key. Now I'm going to add some typography for the lyrics in this video. I feel like kinetic typography is a great way to kind of hook your viewers and keep them watching. I'm gonna go ahead and download this font from defont.com and then I can open it in my downloads. And here in my downloads, I can just right click on the font and say open with font book. This is going to install the font on my computer. I can just hit install and now it's installed on my computer. So now I'm gonna hop back here into Premiere Pro and we're just gonna listen to what the artist says right here. We can even just bring this clip into After Effects. Now I'm just going to make a new text layer. And on this layer, I'm going to say, they said what they said. Let's just shrink this down a little bit. I'm going to change the fill color to something like a yellow. So let's just make it yellow, change the text to that new font we just downloaded. I'm just going to put the subtitles down at the bottom, go to effects and presets. I'm going to go to animation presets drop down text and we'll say animate in and we'll just say fade up words. So let's just drag that onto our timeline. Let's just drag this in to like a second and a half. So now the words are just gonna kind of gradually pop up one by one. Now what I'm going to do is add a little position wiggle. So I'm just gonna type in position, drag a position wiggle onto the letters and then we're gonna change the wiggle amount to like 35, add some deep glow and let's take the radius down to like 200 add a sapphire flicker so if i just type in s flicker or if i just type in flicker actually if i could spell we would see sapphire flicker here now you do need the sapphire plugins for this i'm going to drag and drop that onto my letters as well so now the letters are going to kind of flicker on and off they said what they said i said what i said and i was gonna say what i said what I'm going to do is just cut the audio and the video where this line is. I'm going to highlight both of those. I'm going to right click both and hit replace with After Effects Composition. This way I get the audio layer here in After Effects so I can time up the lyrics even more. I'm going to actually make the new text layers. So I'm going to right click and hit new text. We're going to change this font from that font from our previous example. So I picked the Perulin font right here and made it bold. So I'm just going to duplicate that layer and just write out the lyrics. And I'm just going to play around with the layout of each of these words as well. So now that I got all the lyrics in this shot, what I'm going to do is put a position wiggle on each of these, just like we did in the last example. Now that I got it all timed up with the lyrics, what I'm going to do is duplicate our layer, our video layer here, drag it to the top 
and I'm going to rotoscope our subject out of the foreground. All right, now that our subject is rotoscoped, I'm just going to hop back into our main composition panel. And now you can see we have the words appearing behind our subject. Now I want the last word to be above our subject. And then what we can do is actually to sell this depth a little bit more, we can look up camera lens blur and apply that to some of these words here in the back. So let's apply it to these ones here in the back, just so they're a little bit blurrier. Let's turn it up to like nine. You can see now the now is a little bit blurrier. Uh, let's do the same thing on this one. The last thing I'm gonna do is apply some deep glow and some flicker onto each of these words. So let's just look up deep glow and start applying it. So let's try it on the now. That's probably too much there. So let's do 200 at like 0.5. So let's just copy paste that on these other words now. And then let's find a sapphire flicker. Here's sapphire flicker. Let's just toss this onto each of these text layers as well. So our text flickers and glows just makes it look a little bit cooler. I also think it would be dope if we just blurred the background a little bit too. So let's search up that camera lens blur one more time and throw that onto our background layer. All right, so that's probably a little bit too blurry there. Let's take it down. Let's go to like maybe a 14. And then I also think it would be cool Cool to maybe take the opacity down too. So I'm going to select this layer. I'm going to take the opacity down to like 65. So our background is a little bit darker than our text layer and our rotoscope layer. Now you want to make sure you have your transparency grid turned off, of course. And now this is looking so dope. So what I'm going to do now is just right click all of these and I'm going to hit OK here. And then I'm going to add RSMB on top of this pre comp. So we get a little bit more motion blur throughout this shot. I put a switch on my Glock and now it's in a different mode. How the fuck you the plug, you ain't never seen a ball. I got your bitch on my phone, now she taking off her clothes. In an all white suburban, she just handle like a ball. Let's just take the end of this clip, for example, when the song kind of, you know, dies down and there's not much happening. So right there at the end of this little clip right here, let's throw this little bit of this clip through the CRT plugin. So I'm just going to take it into After Effects and we're going to use the CRT plugin. So what I'm going to do is select my layer. Now that I'm here in After Effects, come up to Window, Extension, CRT Emulator. But what this is going to do is it's going to kind of make my footage look like it was shot on like an old school TV. So I'm just going to hit Style 8. This is like my favorite preset in the plugin. From here, I can customize this even further. Let's go ahead and click on our glitches option right there. Let's turn up the vibrance, is turn up the glow quite a bit as well. I, these are just personal preference. You can get this plugin, play around with it. We're just going to hit complete. Once you're happy with how it looks in After Effects, all you got to do is come up to composition and render this back out to Premiere Pro. <laughs> The next effect I'm going to start sprinkling around this edit is the slow shutter effect. No matter what the edit is, I usually find myself going back to this specific effect and using it on a lot of my projects. And duplicate this layer on top of itself. We're going to add echo onto this layer. So I'm just going to type in echo under my effects and presets, throw an echo onto this layer, change the number of echoes up to like nine, and then let's change the blend mode to screen, hide this layer underneath. So as you can see, when we change the echo operator to screen, it gets really bright. So in order to kind of counter this, I'm just going to type in luma corrector right here, and we're just going to apply a luma corrector onto this clip. We're going to take the gamma down. We're just going to kind of balance out this shot how we see fit using the Luma corrector, right? So that's a lot better. I'm going to go back to that monochrome punch. I'm going to throw that onto this clip as well. So let's add the posterized time effect onto this clip and let's change the value down to a value like uh, 12. Let's go with 12 for now. But I didn't pop out. Grab an order from Casey Smokeburger, then I hot out. They really influenced by the shit that we be doing. We didn't mow so many rappers, but they ain't giving credit. Man. Next, I'm going to show you guys a really easy way to kind of speed up the music video editing process, especially once you're done adding all your special effects. And that's by using Transition Preset. If you go to my website and download the free pack, you can download a few of my free transition presets that you can install into Adobe Premiere Pro and get a couple bonus transitions for your next project. This pack also includes a couple overlays as well. So feel free to go check out the links down below. Now I'm gonna show you guys how I use presets in this music video. So let's just find an area where there's not much going on effect wise, like this area right here. There's just not much happening here yet. So let's just add a little something in this area right here. So I'm just gonna start at the cut in between these two clips, hold shift, 
go to the left once and make a cut there. Hold shift, go to the right twice and make a cut there. This goes five frames on either side of our cut and we're just gonna make a new cut highlight both those new clips, right click and hit nest. So we're nesting our clips together. All we have to do is go to our effects, our preset panel. I do have two preset packs on my website. I have the blueprints transition preset pack and then I have the glitch transition preset pack. For this one, let's just try the glitch pack. Let's roll with something like the flash glitch. Let's just drag and drop that on this nested sequence. We're also going to throw a transition on the first clip here as well. Let's use a transition from my blueprints pack. So again, I'm just cutting five frames on either side of the cut right clicking nesting hitting okay and then i'm just gonna go to my blueprints pack i think my favorite one in this whole pack is this a transition preset called strobe slide so i'm just gonna take that and drag that onto my nested sequence that shit get exposed niggas talking hit the road but they just runners to the stove couple bitches got their hands out they want to get chose get some compound then they get a bank roll from chose everybody will live this life i want to show you guys another way to transition in between your clips this method is a little bit cleaner a little bit more practical and you can get yourself some of these free transitions when you download my free pack. Now this method is called matte transitions. You can see here I have pulled up on my screen the entire matte transition pack that you can get on my website. You just want to go through these and figure out which ones you really like and then you can pick those out for your edit. So that one's really cool right there. Elevator is really cool. Let's try dragging that one into our timeline and let's just make this clip a transition. With my elevator transition selected, I have to right click on it and hit scale to frame size so it's the full size of this video. I'm gonna drag it over our transition point. Now with this first clip, I'm just gonna cut it. I'm gonna drag it up and extend it for the duration of this transition. I'm gonna extend the next clip underneath and now on this top clip i'm going to go to effects track mat key and i'm going to type in track mat key and throw that onto this top clip now we're going to change the composite using from matte alpha to matte luma and change the matte to the layer that has our transition on it which would be video layer three let's actually throw on another matte transition onto the end of this clip as well so i'm just going to go back to my pack here this one kind of looks similar to the last transition so let's use this one on the next transition area. So again, I'm just going to cut my first clip, extend it for the length of the transition. Same with the bottom clip. Now I'm going to go to my effects, track matte key, throw this onto that top clip, change it from matte alpha to matte luma, change the matte. 50 late source rare money. Couple bitches got their hands out, they want to get chose. Get some compound, then they get a bank roll from chose. Everybody will live this lifestyle as that shit get exposed. Niggas talking hit the road, but they just runners to the stuff. The next thing I like to do in my music video edits after I'm kind of done with creating my own transitions is adding some flash transitions, some flash effects to my clips. And it's really easy to do this. I'm going to type in an effect called brightness and contrast. We're gonna click and drag that into our footage. Just keyframe the brightness all the way up. Same with the contrast and just make keyframes there. Now we're gonna go three or four frames in to the right. We're gonna reset these values back down to zero. So from here, I can just take the brightness and contrast and then we can paste this onto our next clip as well. So all I'm doing is copy and pasting this brightness and contrast and I can just go up and down my timeline and just start pasting the brightness and contrast around on my clip. Bullshit, man, I'm Chevy Chase. I didn't have love in the city. I hit another state. Life lessons, niggas be Jeremy. They Harvey to face. A lot of niggas slithered in the... Uh, the Next thing I like to do on my music video edits is just add some movement, add some zoom in, some zoom outs on my clips. Now you can do this with a transform effect or if you're just doing a minimal amount of movement, you can just use the scale in position keyframe straight in Premiere Pro. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. In this clip, you know, the artist is kind of in the background is we can actually start the scale and position in a lot farther on the artist, just focus in right there at the beginning of this shot. And then as the shot progresses, we can zoom our scale value back out and we can change the position. But now look at how trippy and cool that looks compared to before, right? Intro, I'm talking winter nights, nigga. We put in plastic on these windows. I'm up in Lawrence breaking bitches, nigga. I have so many bimbos. We would've smack you with the standard, then clean you with the extendos. Man, I'm debating with my white bitch. You can call me Shannon Sharp. Man, my city shine Mike. Next thing I'm gonna do on this music video is just add in some overlays to give it more style. So the overlay pack that I have been really enjoying using is this kind of like acid wash film burn pack by video milkshake i'll make sure to include a link to this pack down below but there's just a bunch of really really nice film burns in this pack and i've really been enjoying using this on my music videos so i'm actually just going to highlight this row of film burns 
and I'm gonna click and drag them onto my timeline here in Premiere. Now, when I hover over these film burns, you can see it's just not as big as the frame. So I'm just gonna increase the scale. I'm gonna copy paste the motion onto all of them. Now what I'm gonna do is change the opacity blend mode of this one. Let's change it to screen. So we're seeing the actual footage show through underneath. And then let's just copy paste that opacity onto all of the film burns as well. So I'm just gonna start sprinkling these around in my timeline. So I'm talking wood or nice, nigga. We put in plastic on these windows. I'm up in Lawrence breaking bitches, nigga. Had so many bimbos. We would've smack you with the standard, then clean you with the extendos. Man, I'm debating with my white bitch. You can call me shit. Before we move on, I do want to mention that if you are interested in downloading some free overlays for your next video, go check out my website, VentureVisuals.com, and download the free pack. You'll receive a couple free overlays that you can use on your next edit. The next effect I'm going to throw around on this music video is called Sapphire Flicker. For example, take this effect clip that we made earlier, right, with slit scan, and we added the glow onto it as well. Well, now let's try it with some Sapphire Flicker. So let's just type in Flicker and find Sapphire Flicker here in Premiere Pro and drag that onto our clip. Now this is just gonna flicker the brightness on this clip. It's gonna make it a little bit more eye-catching. They really influenced by the shit that we be doing. We didn't mow so many rappers, but they ain't giving credit. Man, that style that you took from us shit is so pathetic. Only dead presidents that we talk about. So this camera was obviously set to some sort of color profile. This is not flat footage. Typically, if you're a videographer, you wanna be shooting in log, which means it's just gonna be completely flat. In Canon, you have C-Log. In Sony's, you have S-Log. So depending on the camera you have, you kinda wanna shoot flat because if you shoot flat, you can do more with the color in post-production, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. So let's just go to our project panel and we're gonna make a new adjustment layer. So I'm just gonna select new adjustment layer and we're gonna click and drag this adjustment layer over our entire project. I'm gonna look up Lumetri color here, click and drag it onto our adjustment layer. On this layer, we're going to drop down the Lumetri color. I'm going to increase the contrast up to like 50. Then we're going to take the highlights down maybe to negative 30, increase the shadows to 25. Let's also increase the temperature so everything warms up just slightly, boost the saturation just a little bit, increase the whites, decrease the blacks, and then we'll open up the creative tab. Now this is where I do a little bit of work uh, just within the shadows. I usually like to make the shadows a little bit cooler and then I like to make the highlights a little bit warmer. We'll drop the curves down and just tweak out the curves. Just add a little contrast here, slight S curve. Color correcting and color grading is really personal preference. It's up to you how you want your project to look. So I'm just kind of doing some basic correction here because the footage is already kind of color corrected. You know what I mean? It's already got good color. So we're just kind of complementing the existing color. I do kind of think this would look cool with like a different hue of green in the background. So we can just highlight the green hue in this video then we can change the green hue you can see the leaves changing there in the background we can make them really green we can make them purple let's just increase the warmth of them just a little bit kind of gives it some more texture a little bit more flavor there now let's just bop around our timeline and just make sure we don't have like any weird looking clips like this one kind of looks weird so let's just actually take this green down you can see how the green changes there in the back let's just mellow it out just a little bit so now it's working better for that clip and it still looks good on these previous clips as well. So one of the last effects I want to mention today is just the Boris Film Glow. So if I just type in Film Glow, you do have to purchase this effect suite that comes with these plugins. I'm just going to click and drag the Boris Continuum Film Glow onto this clip right here and you'll see the stylized difference it gives our clip. So you can see now in the background, we have a lot more glow impacting our clip versus before, let's just switch this off. So there's before and now there's after. So I usually try to throw this uh, film glow around on my edits. Typically the last thing I do before exporting my project is apply sound effects to all the transition points in my edit. So for example, let's just take this special effect we created earlier, this mixed media effect. It's got that paper texture and we wanna kinda hear that effect as it's happening. Typically what I do is I go to a website called Elements in Vado and on this website I can search up something like paper scribble, right? So let's just find a good sound effect for paper scribble. And I'm just gonna search for this sound effect. 
That one's cool right there. Let's take that one, let's download it. So here's the file that I downloaded that has the paper crumpling sound effect. I'm just gonna drag and drop it to where this paper effect is happening. Now let's turn it down a little bit. Let's keep it in the background, let's go like a negative nine dB. It's just gonna give our music video a little bit more atmosphere, a little bit more texture. Now when you're finished editing your project, it's real easy to export with maximum quality. I'm gonna show you my settings. So what you wanna do is just make sure your in and out points are over your timeline. This is gonna be your in point. This is going to be your out point. Click and drag those to be at the very beginning and the very end of your project. Hit command M to pull up your export settings. We're just going to call this Mondo part two, since that's how it was sent to me. Change our preset from high quality 1080p to high quality 4K. We can drop down this video setting. We're going to select render at maximum depth, and then we're go going to also select use maximum render quality. So I usually just keep it on VBR one pass at 80 and uh, send it from there. So make sure you have your audio turned on and then you're just gonna hit export and that's gonna export your music video. Like I mentioned before, if you are interested in downloading some video editing packs, check out my website, venturevisuals.com, where you can download overlays, transition presets, title templates, and more. So definitely check out the links in the description down below if that sounds interesting to you. Until next time, I'm Jake Benner. Peace out.